Hi all, it's Rosie. Welcome to the Rancho. Big kickoff of uh, moonshining season here, California style. Tea girls can do. Today's going to be an exciting day. We're going to be doing our first ferment of the year. What that means is we're going to be taking grains, sugar, water, yeast, combining them, and uh, getting something that's going to ferment and convert the uh, starches and sugars in the uh, 26 gallon mix into ethanol when it goes into the still. You know, the basis of all of all distilling is making what's called a distiller's beer. Now, I know you think a beer is something that's sold in a can or a bottle, but in actual fact, when you're making whiskey, you're always making first what's called a distiller's beer. All it is is a uh, beer that's made stuck into a still and it's heated and the uh, high alcohols are extracted and purified to a great extent. But we all start, whether you're making beer or whiskey, we all start with what's called a uh, distiller's beer or something. I'm in, uh, I'm in full hillbilly mood today, mode today and uh, ready to go and excited. I'll show you in a little bit. I got my uh, barrel out. I got the uh, propane stove. I've got the fresh bag of grains that I bought and I'm going to show you how we do a ferment. What I don't have today is what's called back set for sour mashing. And you know that's a problem for me because sour mashing actually involves taking what's left over in the still from the last run using about eight gallons of that and putting it in the um, fermenting barrel. Well, guess what? I don't have anything left over from September and October. I wouldn't use it anyway if I did because it's gone rotten now and I don't want a lousy, uh, lousy mix. So to me, the first distillation of the season is kind of a throwaway. If we get some decent alcohol out of it, it'll be okay. But once the second ferment goes and I use the uh, back set, to uh, make it and sour mash it, <laughs> that yield and that uh, flavor is going to be uh, awesome. Let's get to it today. We've got some uh, grains to get cooked up. We got the uh, well charged. We don't use chlorinated city water. We have a uh, well on the ranch out here that we use that makes uh, nice, clean, tasty, tasty uh, booze, and it's great. So, thanks for being here today. Let's get to it in I real to time. Get some nice, fresh well water here. Put about uh, four gallons into a clean pot. This is what we're going to prepare the. Uh, this is what we're going to prepare the uh, grain mashing. And I got to heat up the grains and basically boil. I got to basically boil the grains so that they release their grain flavor. I'm not doing a grain conversion to convert the starches in the. Uh, in the grains like the corn and things to uh, to starches that the uh, yeast can break down and convert. That's not what moonshine is about. Moonshine is down and dirty and getting the alcohol out and using sugar as a uh, as a booster to get a lot of yield. We just use the uh, grain for flavor. We don't go through all the 172 degree Fahrenheit conversion. We are moonshiners to the core. Just to show you the uh, feedstock, just 50, uh, 50 pounds of white sugar. It's a lot for me to hump in. I hate to hump them in. And I've got a sweet feed corn, oats, barley mixture here. They call it the wet. It's got the, uh, you can see the corn in it. It's all cracked. You can see the uh, barley and stuff. I, the boss always laughs. I said, this stuff tastes good, good when, you, uh, when you hit it to the boiling point. Almost make like a great... Uh, a great breakfast meal but he thinks I'm uh, crazy and out of my mind right but uh, you can see the bits of molasses crumble and uh, this stuff really does make incredible you know I guess predominantly it's about 60 percent uh, of uh, corn it's got about 20 uh, percent oats got some barley and um, it's got the molasses so it's called a sweet feed and it really does a uh, wonderful job so I'm going to go ahead and open the uh, sugar up. I really don't like this uh, part of the job. I'm going to go ahead and start boiling the water first because I'm going to add the uh, five pounds of grain to that and once it's up to a boil, don't try to bring it up to a boil with the grain or it'll all be a sticky mess. Boil it first. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put the uh, 
add the uh, sugar in here and um, you know, there's no point in not adding it first because adding ingredients on top will help stir it and uh, dissolve it so all right okay I've got the uh, water boiling away you really can't see the uh, flame down there because it's pretty bright outside today a sunny day but uh, trust me she's heating up down there I'm gonna let that come to a boil in the meantime be part of the job I can't stand even though I have bigger muscles from doing all this work on the uh, rancho now I gotta go ahead and uh, pour this sucker in here this uh, 50, uh, 50 pounds of sugar <laughs> Yeah, moon shining girl. Yeehaw. <laughs> Somebody said last year my big titties give me superpower when it comes to lifting heavy loads and all that stuff. Fifty pounds ain't nothing. Yeah, having done the uh, shine shack inside now, I don't want to have grains and sugars inside anymore. I want to be doing all this stuff outside. Remember last year, I got the new grain because he uh, had a little bit of a rat problem in, the, uh, in November when I went to uh, Las Vegas. When I got back, the rats were taking over the building and Wolfie's laying there sleeping right in the middle of it. Like their, uh, like their pals. Mm -hmm. I uh, hope my boobs aren't popping after. Okay, that is it. Neat and clean. 50 pounds of uh, sugar added. Believe it or not, the hardest part of doing the ferment is over. I just wish I had some back set to use because it's going to make it a lot more, a lot more difficult to get a uh, good uh, ferment the first time out. Well, that's uh, well, that's boiling away over there. Actually, I uh, just started. It's going to take a while to uh, boil up. I want to go ahead and add a little bit of a water in here, just a couple gallons, to allow this to start to uh, allow this to start to uh, dissolve the sugar down there, give it sort of a head start. And uh, brother, that's a lot of sugar, but uh, in about uh, 10 days, two weeks, that'll be uh, that'll have converted all that sugar into. Uh, ethanol and then it'll just be a matter of extracting it. Fun, fun, fun. Run away in there now. What I'm going to do now is carefully add the grains. Remember, don't put grains into cold water and then bring it up to a boil. That's a, uh, that's a loser. You want to have your, uh, you want to have your liquid boiling first, your water and then, uh, then add your grains to it. I think, uh, yeah, that should be, I think what I'm gonna do is add a double heaping. As I remember from last year, it's like 10 pounds per batch. And we, and we just, we uh, ferment on top of that several times. So I'm gonna have another crack and some more. Fill up the, uh, fill up the bowl again. about uh, half a pound of grains per per gallon. So that would really be about 13 pounds. I'm going to use about uh, 12 here. Remember to keep uh, keep stirring. The worst thing you could do is scorch this stuff and then you have to throw it out and start all over again. And I guarantee you, if you bring it up to temperature from cold with your grains at the beginning, you will scorch this stuff you'll have to uh, toss it. I remember last year when I was, we were making rye 
and I uh, scorched the rye on the bottom because it's a very fine grain. And I remember crying to Janet and uh, texting her that uh, I destroyed the uh, this pot because I thought everything I'd never be able to get it clean because everything was just black on the bottom of it from uh, being scorched. So I learned a hell of a lesson that day. So. <laughs> keep stirring while she's gone and these are going to come up to a boil and then stay at a boil for five minutes and what that's going to do is open those grains up it'll cause them to swell and release all of their grain goodness and flavor when I go to add it in the pot got to do that very carefully I'm going to add the uh, I'm going to add the liquid in too because that liquid is now has flavor that we would use. Then we're going to top it up with the water and then we're going to prepare what they call the uh, yeast bomb. What a cool name, huh? We're going to get ready, get that ready to uh, get that ready to go too, but keep it stirring. Nothing sticking. I swear that'd make a good breakfast for me. <laughs> More speed. All right, guys. <laughs> There's no doubt that uh, handling hot grains is the most dangerous part of the operation transferring hot grains cooking hot grains i've known uh, some people back where i come from back down south that uh, tipped over grain pots and you know had to have amputated legs and stuff you got to be really careful what's going to happen now is this is boiling away this is going to start absorbing a lot of the uh, water that's in the uh, mix so it's critical that it be kept continuously stirring and I have uh, turned down the uh, heat on the uh, propane burner to get that down get that down so I don't uh, overcook that so she's at a good rolling boil I'm always scraping and feeling the bottom to make sure nothing's accumulating all I want to feel is that stainless steel bottom that smooth bottom when I feel a little rough spot I know I got potential trouble brewing, so I keep it stirring. Okay, and then the real dangerous thing we got to be really careful transferring into the uh, into the uh, mash into the mash drum there to make sure we don't uh, don't get splashed and don't get burned. You can see she's rolling, boiling good now. So we're going to let her go for about five minutes, and then turn it off and let all those uh, grains swell up. Heat off. Now what I'm going to do is just put this off of the uh, propane stove and let that cool down a bit. And when that cools down, I can put that back in the uh, garage. And really the hard part of the uh, whole process is uh, over. But uh, transferring this into the uh, mash pot is definitely where we want to uh, exercise the most cautious caution. And that and stills, still bl stills blowing up are the uh, most dangerous part of the whole freaking see, I process. I have a pot set on top and I have a smaller saucepan that I use to very carefully ladle it out. Be careful not to make a mess, but I will spray everything down when I'm done. And then just add that mixture down the funnel there. And it's really safe and it's very, uh, very controlled. There's no splattering. What I wouldn't do is stand up there and just pour it into the funnel. What if one of the handles broke off or you know I'd be I'd be hospitalized with uh, definitely with third degree uh, third degree burns. I swear I want to get a bowl and eat this stuff. Uh, <laughs> I've been on my uh, diet, so even horse feed is looking looking mighty good. So I'm just scooping it out, just slowly adding it to the barrel. And I'm going to keep a little bit of the last bit to use it as the base for making a yeast bomb, or what we're going to add to the uh, add to the mix to start the process uh, start the process going. So, yeah, so far so good, no problems at all. And uh, boy, there, this is going to be some kind of flavor the first time right out of the gate. You know, an old moonshine and broad can tell when it's going to be a, when it's going to be a good one. The next step in the process will be I'll be tapping, topping this up with the uh, well water and it'll help cool down the mix and then I'm going to aerate it and we're going to talk about the critical nature of why you need to aerate and why so many moonshiners go bad when it comes to this step in the, uh, in the process. So 
just about got it all. I'll save a little bit for the uh, yeast bomb. And uh, knock on wood, I've never gotten hurt in all the years, ever since uh, childhood when I've been associated with uh, making moonshine, I never got hurt. And I just want to save a little of that stuff to, uh, to make the uh, yeast bomb there. So, that finishes that up. Okay, I don't know how well you can see down in there, but you can see uh, it's uh, looking good. <sighs> Smells good too, that grain and those sugars. So what I want to do is give it a real good stir. I didn't take it up to 26 gallons. 25 gallons is fine. It still holds a little more, but I don't want the uh, still to ever be overfilled or it might experience something called puking where the uh, hot boiling mixture goes up the uh, condenser column, the, uh, excuse me, up the distillation column and blocks it and fouls it all up. So I don't want that. So now I'm going to stir it up and then I'm going to talk to you about aeration. Oh, geez, sadly after uh, three years our air pump has failed so I need to go get a uh, new air pump but that's all good because this needs to, uh, this needs to cool down quite a bit anyway before we add the uh, yeast to it so you know when you're a moonshine or stuff happens right you got to roll with the uh, roll with the punches so I also need to get some citric acid because I don't have any back set to lower down the pH I got to go buy some citric acid up from the um, up from the uh, what would you call it the beverage supply the beer and wine maker shop they have uh, citric acid and stuff so I'm going to use that. I just use it the first time through with the seas and try to get the pH lower. Otherwise, the boss be uh, yelling more than usual up there about the how lousy everything turned out, okay? So I'll see you when I get back. Here's the pisser, guys. There was nothing wrong with the pump. It had just had a hell of a kink in the air hose line. Woohoo! Well, there went uh, 10 bucks, but at least we got a uh, backup. I did go up to the beverage people store up on uh, Piner Road and pick up some citric acid. <clears throat> to get this pH down, I want to add about uh, 19 grams to 25 gallons. And that should bring it down to about 5.0, the uh, pH, because I'm starting at a pretty high level, around uh, 7.88. This is pretty hard water, a lot of calcium in the water here. So I'm going to add four teaspoons in. You can see the aeration. It's going real good now. You can see you're bubbling up, and you really need to uh, you really need to aerate because those yeast in the uh, first 24 hours need a lot of oxygen to do their thing. If they don't have a lot of oxygen in the first 24 hours, they're not going to multiply. They're not going to be happy. They're going to be some unhappy moonshine making yeast. So what you got to do is make them happy. So you got to kind of kiss their butt a little bit. So you give them a nice comfy place. You give them plenty of oxygen. They're happy. And then after 24 hours or so when the uh, fermentation begins, you know what? They don't need anything. They don't want oxygen. It's all an anaerobic process. No oxygen needed. They're happy and they go to town doing that uh, conversion. But to make sure we get the maximum aeration, because remember we boiled up the uh, grains and stuff, driving all the oxygen out. The well water has a lot of oxygen in it. It doesn't have any chlorine or anything. But I like to take a few hours and oxygenate that water. So I'm going to go ahead and get a teaspoon now and add the citric acid. <clears throat> and then we're going to talk you about could the also use, Some people use lemon juice if you don't have a uh, supplier nearby that sells citric acid. And we got a really good, a lot of people in California make wine and a lot of people make beer. So I'm going to add uh, four spoons in here and that'll, uh, that'll gradually dissolve it. I want to be careful with this bag because this is like five bucks for that stuff. So what I want to do now is uh, give a little bit of a stir with a stirring rod. I'm glad I'm not going to have this stuff in the uh, shine shack or this all sugary ferment. Plenty sweet. Alright, now let's go inside and we'll talk about the uh, let's talk about the yeast. I told you guys I really like to use uh, Red Star yeast. It's so good under so many different temperature conditions and this is only like uh, 
seven dollars for uh, two pounds of uh, dry yeast and this stuff is the bomb you know when it starts to ferment it just goes you know the, I've said a few times the first ferment of the year is not the uh, not the best one because we don't have any back set to use for sour mashing sour mashing is so critical so I captured some of the fluid when I cooked the grains and I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, water that's probably deoxygenated now that water from having coffee this morning and I just want to bring that up to maybe uh, 90 degrees or so I don't want to kill the yeast and then I'm going to add a cup and a half of the yeast to it and let it sit on the side and let the yeast get activated don't just put dry yeast into your uh, ferment you've got to activate it and prepare a uh, yeast bomb okay so I'm gonna wait till this gets up to about uh, 90 degrees you stir that up a little bit because yeast aren't crazy that cold yeah and that's probably already right there right now yep and now I'm going to I want to take a little add a little bit of sugar to that too to sort of activate it so it doesn't have a shock when it goes to the uh, big fermenting pot okay, I'm going to fill up my uh, first cup here this doesn't really have to be exact I generally find once I get some back set I don't need to use as much uh, yeast and remember the heat's off now it went up to about 90 degrees and about uh, oh another half half a cup like one and a half cups and then I'm going to give that a, a slight stir here and let that just get uh, waterlogged a little bit and let that uh, let that start to get to uh, let that start to get to work now that uh, grains and some of that liquid that came over with the grains will ensure that the yeast does not get shocked when it's added in to the uh, big pot all I'm trying to do here is sort of proof the yeast and get it uh, get it activated. You can see it's uh, clumping a bit there. So what I'm probably going to do is get the uh, added to the. Uh, I got a big stainless pot. I think I'm going to use that. If it gets uh, if it gets kind of clumpy, the uh, yeast because it's in with the grain and stuff. You can always do this separate. Just don't put any of the grain in. Just capture the uh, capture the liquid that you. Uh, prep the grains in but I like to take a, uh, a wire whisk and sort of break up the uh, any clumps that are in there it also helps to uh, activate the, uh, the yeast and that's really good I transferred that to the biggest uh, saucepan so all we have to do is uh, wait about a half hour or so and then we'll uh, add that to the mix which itself is cooled down a lot I can feel the side of the barrel and my experience tells me having added the 20 gallons of uh, water or whatever to the uh, to the mix that uh, that cooled it down enough so it won't be dangerous for the yeast. Guys, is that a happy yeast or what? Look at the way that's uh, flowing over the top there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, carefully add that in. I think I'll put the funnel on top. And I tell you, happy yeast makes a good brew. That's aerating good. The temperature's not hot. It's just lukewarm in there going to keep the aeration going that's why they call it a yeast bomb look at that huh right on my new sidewalk let's pour that baby in right there and that's going to be some happy yeast getting to work there and I'll just spray that out I'm going to let that um, keep aerating definitely keep aerating there and let the yeast get to work and then uh, We'll wrap it up and have some final words about putting some heaters in uh, heater in there, okay? Okay, she is aerating real good in there. You can see it bubbling, uh, bubbling away. And then what I also did was add a submersible pump, not a submersible pump, a submersible heater, like an aquarium heater. The one that's designed to go into the water. And what that'll do is maintain a nice 76 uh, degree temperature in there. And sitting out here, it'll be just just fine. So, yeah, we've got the uh, yeast seem happy. There's plenty of bubbles, yeast bubbles on the top. And everything looks good. I don't want to seem like a uh, professor, but the first uh, ferment of the season is now in the barrel. All it remains to do now is check on it periodically. And we use a uh, specific gravity for 
float, the, the more that the uh, sugars convert to alcohol, the uh, lower that the, uh, actually the higher the uh, float will go because uh, sugar water is much denser than alcohol. So as the density uh, decreases, I can't, I guess it floats lower, I don't know. Yeah, it floats lower as it gets to, uh, as it gets to full conversion of sugars. What's actually going to happen is that's going to float, uh, yeah, it's going to float lower in there because the uh, ethanol is much less dense than water and sugar. So when the conversion takes place, hopefully we'll get a 1.0, which means full full conversion on all the sugar. Although I doubt it. You know, a full conversion on this amount of 25 gallons of uh, distiller's beer would probably yield us about three gallons, three, yeah, about three gallons with some tails and some heads. You don't have to worry about that is what that is right now, but uh, three gallons of decent product. As it is, I'll be very happy to get like a gallon and a half on this first run. The boss's expectations are much higher. But it's very difficult unless you have backset to do sour mashing. And it's one reason the houses like Jim Beam and uh, Jack Daniels do sour mashing because it makes such a great product and it, it just makes sure everything is fully converted to sugars. Whether it's sugar or whether it's grain, it's a great way to do stuff. Look at a bottle sometime like Jack Daniels Sour Mash Method, Jim Beam Sour Mash. They all do it. It's the secret weapon of being a, a distiller. So thanks for being here today. You saw me put up the uh, first ferment of the season. Keep your fingers crossed. In uh, two weeks or so, uh, the boss will either be uh, yelling or he'll be happy. I'm voting he's going to be uh, yelling. All right. Have a uh, good rest of your day and thanks for being here.